Hello there, welcome to Talking Music. So I've treated myself. Um, I wanted to continue the collection of this person and um, and so I went on eBay. And James Bimson, if you're watching, uh, you'd put a Facebook post on, one of my friends, James, and he put a, a Facebook post on that he'd been listening to the vinyl of this. Uh, well, I haven't got the vinyl, but I have got... Da, 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 da. Paul McCartney, unplugged, Look at that, an original eleven ninety nine hour price sticker on. Uh, it's got 17 tracks on it. It's the original MTV um, concert, of course. Uh, it says, this album contains live acoustic music from the MTV programme Unplugged, recorded at Limehouse Studios, Wembley, London, on Friday, January the 25th, 1991. This is all completely new to me. Uh, I'm just going to show you the CD. There it is. I really can't wait to play this. And there's a booklet as well. So let's just have a quick look at the booklet. There we go. And picture of Linda there. Show you another one. There we go. As I say, really, really looking forward to playing this. An unbelievable 33 years old. Uh, but I am trying to um, build up on my, my Paul McCartney CD collection uh, at the moment. So what does it sound like? Uh, Let's find out. Talking music time, Paul McCartney Unplugged. There's the artwork for it there. I'll just show you a couple of pages inside and notes about each track, where they've come from. Uh, absolutely brilliant booklet to go with the album. So there's the disc there. One album I'd never listened to before. Um, and I'll just show you the back. So there you go, that's the back there. Um, what can I tell you about it? 17 tracks on this CD. It was a live album of unplugged performances um, recorded and released in 1991. Um, so with, before that, we'd had Trip in the Live Fantastic. Um, and basically, this was for MTV Unplugged. Um, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, he was the first of a long line of artists that would follow, Eric Clapton would follow, The Cause, just a couple there, uh, that would release an album of their performance on the show. Uh, and unlike other artists who appeared on the show with acoustic instruments plugged into amplifiers, McCartney's instruments were entirely unplugged. I mean, that is brilliant, isn't it? Um, microphones were carefully placed close to guitars, pianos, to pick up the sound. Um, and... Uh, I just can't believe I've not listened to this album until 2024. So, track one, you've got uh, Be Bapalula, a cover of the Gene Vincent song. Uh, we then got I Lost My Little Girl, uh, which was one of the first songs written by Paul McCartney. Um, and the first he wrote for guitar. Now, I think McCartney wrote the song in 1956 and 1957, uh, around the age of, age of 14 or 15, shortly after his mum's death. But it's great to have a version of this included. We then got a uh, bit of Beatles here, there and everywhere before going into Blue Moon of Kentucky, um, which is absolutely brilliant. I love the change in tempo partway through Blue Moon of Kentucky as well. But, uh, and I love how raw it comes across, uh, but it's brilliant. Track five, We Can Work It Out. Um, Interesting because McCartney starts again when he forgets the words and it's all left in. How many artists would do that now uh, where they'd kind of leave an outtake in before going in to perform it properly? It's brilliant and it's all the better for it as well. Uh, we've then got San Francisco Bay Blues. Uh, we've got I've Just Seen a Face, another Beatles song there for track seven. Uh, we have some solo McCartney as well. Track eight is Every Night. Uh, we've got track nine, She's a Woman. High Heel Sneakers is track 11. Uh, more Beatles would come with I and I Love Her. Uh, before more solo, that would be something, track 12. Uh, we've got Blackbird, track 13, and then a brilliant cover of Ain't No Sunshine, which is up there equal to Bill Withers' version, I think. It is really good and took me a bit by surprise. Uh, track 15, Good Rockin' Tonight, uh, before Singing in the Blues. And then it ends with junk. But what else can I tell you about the album? Well, we've got a brilliant slow down version of And I Love Her, which nothing like the original really, but I really like it. Um, 
I also love tracks such as Good Rocking Tonight and Singing the Blues. They were good covers. McCartney just sounds so relaxed on this album. Uh, and it sounds like he's really enjoying it too. Um, several tracks performed in the show were not included in the album. So Mean Woman Blues, Midnight Special, Matchbox, The Fool and Things We Said Today. So they were all recorded but not, not on this CD. Uh, Things We Said Today a Midnight Special would see an official release two years later in 1993 as B-sides to the Biker Like an Icon single. Uh, mean Woman Blues was also released as a uh, on a promo single only, uh, but it's pretty expensive on eBay when, uh, when I've had a look. Good luck finding that one. Maybe one day we'll get a bonus uh, two CD issue uh, with all those tracks that we're missing. Probably would take two CDs, I imagine, to fit them all on as well. Uh, but we can we can live in hope, can't we? Anyway, a brilliant album. If you haven't discovered it and you've listened to some of the MTV Unplugged series, this is absolutely superb. Uh, McCartney sounding at his best and just raw, natural, and it's just good fun. Um, and a great mixture of solo and Beatles and some covers you won't have heard of as well. And I love it how Paul McCartney used uh, kind of the unplugged gig to bring out some of his rarer tracks. He didn't have to do that. He could have gone with the more obvious ones. Uh, but we get three from his debut solo album, McCartney, uh, alongside, you know, familiar Beatles songs. Um, but it's a great playlist. There you go. Like and subscribe. Uh, and don't forget to check out my other Paul McCartney reviews on this channel as well. Bye for now.